Hollywood is littered with production companies, each seeking to get films made, land a distributor, and eventually a release. And one production company that was able to get a sweet deal, at least for a while, was Revolution Studios. The name may not immediately ring a bell, but there's a chance you've seen some of their productions. And I think the history is an interesting one, as it started with a lot of hope and excitement before ultimately fizzling out. Revolution Studios was founded by Joe Roth, one of the most successful producers and former studio executives in Hollywood. After producing his first batch of films, Roth co-founded Morgan Creek Productions. Not long afterwards, he became the head of 20th Century Fox, where he greenlit movies like Home Alone, Edward Scissorhands, Barton Fink, My Cousin Vinny, and Mrs. Doubtfire. Roth then co-founded Caravan Pictures at Disney, where he worked on projects like The Three Musketeers, Angels in the Outfield, and While You Were Sleeping. Disney was impressed enough that he was promoted to chairman of the entire movie studio. Under his leadership, Disney released hit films like 101 Dalmatians, The Rock, Armageddon, The Sixth Sense, The Parent Trap, and Remember the Titans. Roth was also instrumental in repairing the broken relationship between Disney and Robin Williams that had occurred shortly following the release of Aladdin. With all those credentials, Joe Roth was confident enough to start a production company all his own, and thus Revolution Studios was born. Roth's vision was to make modestly budgeted films as opposed to big budget franchise tentpoles. And to get the company off the ground, he signed a unique deal with Sony Pictures that surprised many Hollywood observers at the time. Sony agreed to pay a small distribution fee, along with about 42% of the budget, and would handle all marketing expenses. Revolution was also able to retain the copyrights on all the movies they produced with Sony. There was a lot of confidence and intrigue surrounding this pact, with Sony having a lot of hope Revolution would deliver the needed hits. Unfortunately, it proved to be a bit of a mixed bag. Revolution's first release was the raunchy comedy Tomcats in 2001. Joe Roth also directed one of the company's first productions, with the rom-com America's Sweethearts, which was a solid hit. Revolution was able to find prestige by producing Ridley Scott's Oscar-winning war film Black Hawk Down. This first batch of films gives a good idea of what Revolution's slate would look like, a mix of lowbrow comedies, light-hearted chick flicks, and attempts at prestigious dramas and testosterone-heavy action films. The studio produced one of its biggest hits in the summer of 2002, with Triple X, starring Vin Diesel as a spy with a love for extreme sports. While it finally allowed Revolution to give Sony a blockbuster hit, Triple X also marked the start of the company moving away from Roth's original plan, making films at modest budgets. Sony also was not exactly hurting for success in 2002, as they managed to score big with Spider-Man, Mr. Deeds, Panic Room, and Men in Black 2 without Revolution's help. 2003 was when things started going a bit downhill. Oh, they did very well with the Adam Sandler, Jack Nicholson comedy, Anger Management, and the Eddie Murphy family film, Daddy Daycare. But this was also the year when their budget started ballooning, and Sony Pictures' higher-ups were not pleased. Revolution based a lot of their projects' box office potential on the stars, and Roth was willing to pay the lead actors their requested salaries. Even something like Daddy Daycare ended up costing $60 million. Sure, Eddie Murphy was not cheap, but it's still a movie about a father running a daycare in his own house. Revolution produced a lot of flops that year, including Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis, Hollywood Homicide with Harrison Ford, and their adaptation of Peter Pan. There was also an infamous disaster you may have heard of called Gili. Starring Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, Gili went wildly over budget and was released in August 2003 to horrendous word of mouth. Affleck and Lopez's onset romance was a big story at the time, so Revolution likely hoped that would translate to ticket sales. It did not, and the movie left theaters not long after it entered them. Revolution did go back to more moderate budgets in 2004, although their biggest breakout that year ended up being the critically reviled Wayne's Brothers comedy White Chicks. Roth also stepped into the director's chair for the holiday movie Christmas with the Cranks. 2005 started off on the right foot with Are We There Yet, but then came one underperformer after another, with Triple X, State of the Union, and Rent being especially notable flops. Click and Rocky Balboa proved to be momentary bright spots, 
but they were not enough to offset the losses from projects like the Tim Allen superhero comedy Zoom, the Nicolas Cage vehicle Next, and Julie Taymor's Beatles musical Across the Universe. Eventually, it was announced that the Loch Ness Monster family film, The Water Horse, Legend of the Deep, would be Revolution's last film released by Sony, as the decision was made not to continue the deal. This was probably a relief to Sony, which had reportedly lost over $200 million on this partnership. After that, Revolution sort of disappeared. Joe Roth instead chose to become a producer for hire, and this decade has largely been involved in expensive fantasy films. He produced Alice in Wonderland, Snow White and the Huntsman, Oz the Great and Powerful, Maleficent, and the upcoming Dr. Doolittle movie with Robert Downey Jr. But remember when I said Revolution Studios could keep their library? Well, that would be an important factor in keeping it alive, as the company eventually changed its goal to exploit its titles. In the early 2010s, Revolution produced a television series based on Are We There Yet? and Anger Management, which ran for a few seasons. In 2017, Revolution produced its first theatrical release in almost 10 years, Triple X, Return of Xander Cage. Distributed by Paramount Pictures, the film did not make much of a dent at the domestic box office, but was big in China, and there is another sequel currently in the works. They also made a deal with Universal Pictures to produce sequels for their direct video division, leading to Benchwarmers 2 and Granddaddy Daycare hitting store shelves earlier this year. Revolution has also quietly been acquiring other libraries to boost their portfolio, most prominently Morgan Creek, thus reuniting two of Joe Roth's cherished production companies. And in an interesting case of going full circle, Revolution recently announced that Sony Pictures will handle the television and streaming rights for their entire library, bringing many of those movies back home. The Morgan Creek acquisition also means Sony has the television distribution rights to titles like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and True Romance. To conclude, I think Revolution Studios was a noble experiment, which produced a number of hits, but also plenty of misses. You can tell the passion Joe Roth had when he founded the company, but he was also smart enough to recognize when things were falling apart. Revolution definitely had the potential to be a home for solid films, but most of what was produced there seemed to consist of lowest common denominator fare, although a few gems like Punch Drunk Love, Peter Pan, and Hellboy made it through. Film producing is very much a roll of the dice, and sadly, most of Revolution's roles fell short of winning the game. See you next time.